Welcome, everybody. Welcome, fellow conservatives, fellow patriots. And to be bipartisan, because that's our real goal here. As Hillary would say, welcome, fellow deplorables, rock dwellers. I think Obama said we were bitter clinger honors, or maybe it was just bad people. Biden's called us chumps. Other Democratic leaders have called us things like squealing pigs, hostage takers, terrorists, saboteurs, arsonists. It's, they have all kinds of nice names for us. But, uh, of course, these people are unhinged. But to you, the patriotic Americans who have been maligned precisely because you value the Constitution and freedom, and you see freedom as something that makes America special, Welcome. Welcome once again to the Conservative Commandos radio and television show. I'm George Landreth, and of course, I am here with my good friend, Dr. Nasser Sheikh. We are your Conservative Commandos host today, and we're glad you joined us. We're coming to you on the Conservative Commandos radio network, the AUN TV network, Roku, and uh, you name it, uh, all kinds of different uh, ways you can find us on our own ones and, uh, and on our own website ccrshow.com. Dr. Sheikh, welcome to the Conservative Commandos. I'm glad you could be on uh, with me today and that we can share the mic. Well, absolutely, George. Hey, it's always great as we usually start off the, you know, the week here together. And we start off by saying, you know what, not only is it another great week, but it's just another great day to be alive and well and free and living in the United States of America, the greatest country in the history of the world. And that's why my backdrop back here, I wish I could wrap it around myself. You know, they say, like, you they have a pile of money and you can just go dive into it naked. Well, you know what? Maybe do the same thing with the flag. Wrap it around your body because this is the symbol of freedom. This is what it's all about, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people in America, Americans don't, you know, believe even in this flag as a symbol of the country. But that's unfortunate. But you know what? We as conservatives... We love this country unconditionally. Absolutely. I agree with you entirely on that. You know, one of the things that's interesting, um, you know, we, I, we, we host this show every single day. And, um, and I think to myself, what will happen when it's a slow news day? And we don't have much to discuss. But guess what? That's not this day. <laughs> no, it's not at all. <laughs> been lots of developments. Um, why don't you take us through a little bit of what's been happening in terms of uh, with the vote counts? Because I know that the New York Times and uh, the Washington Post and ABC and NBC and CNN, they all want you to believe that they've determined the outcome of the election. But the reality is that's not how it's done. The Constitution provides that it doesn't work that way. So what, what, what are some of the developments? Well, you know what, George, other than, for example, here on Conservative Commandos, and other than on, you know, some of the other conservative news network and outlets that are out there, the media, the Marxist mainstream media that we consist of, you know, the Alphabet Networks and all these other channels that are out there, they've literally put almost, um, you know, a it's blacked out. I mean, you've got to go to, to get some of the reportage out there, you've got to go to like the Australian network. These guys are doing yeoman's work in terms of what's really happening in Georgia, in Nevada, in Michigan, in Wisconsin, you know, in Pennsylvania. I mean, if you go to Google and you search, for example, like, you know, what happened with the latest judge ruling, it's not on the very front pages. You see all this stuff from like, you know, two months, three months, four months ago, two, three weeks ago. But you really got to sift down. And that's how they talk about all these high tech companies. These big tech companies are controlling what they're viewing. Because if they can put that to bury it down three, four, five pages, you know what it's like when you go to Google. If you don't see it on the front first page, you, you know, you may go to the second page. And if not, you go and you try to type something else in to see if you can get to what you want. So these big tech companies are controlling what we're seeing. And what we're seeing, basically, to give you an idea, is uh, Pennsylvania. They had the um, rule, uh, the Pennsylvania state legislator, uh, legislators uh, last Wednesday, you know, came out with Rudy Giuliani, and they heard expert testimony witness, people that have signed affidavits saying that, guess what, 1.8 million mail-in ballots were supposedly asked for, but 2.5 million ballots were supposedly delivered. How, where's the extra 700,000 ballots? Where do they come up with? You only ask for 1.8, and you get that 2.5. You had another gentleman who's a, I mean, he's he's into data, forensic data, and he said he even saw a guy there with a bag of USB drives. 
and he was allowed to go to these servers and just stick the drives in and pull them out. He had a baggie, and he says, 47 of these USB flash drives are missing. And he went to the uh, person who's in charge, and he, a police officer that was there, and he told what was going on. So we've heard these stories. Now we've got this um, in Arizona today. Uh, they were talking about where Army Colonel Bill Waldron, he confirms that he saw the Dominion, these voting machines with the Smartmatic you know, chip inside there, they were communicating with Germany. And this is what we've been hearing from Sidney um, Powell, uh, who's basically talking about, you know, every time you hear about releasing the Kraken, you know, so to speak. And her and Lynn Wood are going on separate paths, and they're doing different things in terms of showing that, you know, these votes are somehow being manipulated by the software that was done by the CIA and in Venezuela. And you're hearing Hugo Chavez's name come up, and Maduro using these in terms of, you know, all these people, how they're able to go in back, you know, to the back door, and that anybody that has any idea of hacking, a simple hacker can get into these machines and you know change votes, manipulate them, move them from one to the other. I mean, look at what he's talking about. He's saying this Walden, he's an expert on automated voting machines. He says he knows how to get in and corrupt the machines. And he explained that the Dominion was basically brought up on what they call these SCITL connections, which are, in other words, in real time, they're saying that the votes were happening and they were bouncing around on the internet because they were going through these machines and they were being viewed in Germany, in Frankfurt, in, um, uh, in, in, in Spain, uh, in, in some other countries as well, in Venezuela. I mean, so, you know, people look at it and go, it's a conspiracy theory or whatever, but there's so many things out there. It's not just this one thing, George. It's so many things. We were talking with our guests before. Why did you shut down? Why did you shut down the count, the vote? When has that ever happened? 11, 12, midnight, all of a sudden we find out, guess what? They're not counting votes anymore. You're up by 750,000 votes in Pennsylvania, President Trump. Next morning comes around, you, that lead is cut in half in the next couple of days. It's obliterated and you're losing. How do you lose? So it's never happened in the history of, of, uh, of this country in presidential elections. I know you, you know you've got stories like that you're hearing out there as well. So, you know, yeah. what's what's on your end? Well, I think I, I mean my experiences would echo yours in that um, when you look at um, even just kind of statistically speaking. Now, I understand if if a precinct reports in, uh, you know seven votes, it could very well be that's just one family or one business, and they're all friends and they all vote the same way. But, um, but when you report 700,000 votes, you're not going to get 97% of the people voting one way or the other. You're not going to get 90%. You might get 70% versus 30% or, or maybe 60-40. But um, you, the larger the number, the more the number percentages will look like the general public's percentages. And yet that's not what we saw in, uh, in just a handful of jurisdictions. Surprising, not surprisingly, these are the jurisdictions with the problems. These are the jurisdictions where even the vote counters behaved in ways that suggested they were cheating. And, um, and that's also, I think, an important piece of evidence. But, you know, aside from that, um, you know, aside from all of that, there's no evidence of, of any fraud or anything in the thing. I feel like saying this reminds me of so aside from that, Mrs. Lincoln, how did you enjoy the play? Right. You know, <laughs> she's just told you her husband was shot and assassinated. And so your question is, well, yeah, OK, fine. But aside from that, how did you enjoy the play? And she's like, um, actually, there is no aside from that. That's right. the only thing that really matters from my experience with the play is John Wilkes Booth just shot my husband in the back of the head, you know? And I, so I, I find it very frustrating to listen to these people talk because they pretend um, that there's not, you know, that there's not much going on here. We don't need to worry about it. It's a big mistake. Uh, we're just, you know, be, we're being conspiratorial. I'm, I'm like, is it too much to ask for them to not act like they're guilty? I just, you know, because most of the I know yeah. that aren't guilty don't behave like they are. But when you when we when we have evidence suggests you're guilty, and then on top of that you behave like you're guilty, I start saying, hmm, things are lining up here. I mean, it's 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 incredible. For example, Montgomery County in Pennsylvania, not a single mail-in ballot was rejected, not one. 
Now, normally you have a 1% rejection of mail-in ballots, and first-time people using mail-in ballots, supposedly the rejection rate is around 3%. So somewhere between 1% to 3% of mail-in ballots are rejected because they didn't sign it properly, they didn't date it, or maybe they didn't put it in the right... Uh, there's an envelope that goes inside that you put it inside the ballot and goes inside there. All of these things are done. You know what the rate they're saying of the mail-in ballots, I think they were saying in Pennsylvania, the ones that are rejected, 0.0003%. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just unbelievable. Here's another thing they're talking about. Biden only won 477 counties. Obama won 689. That's a difference of 212. Yet Biden somehow had 13 million more votes than Obama? You have 212 less counties? Yeah, there you go. I'm yeah. performed everywhere, but I know um, we're probably coming up against a break here soon. We, we are, um, but you're right. It's kind of hard to imagine that uh, Joe Biden, uh, you know, outperforms Barack Obama in uh, 2008, which was a very historic election, obviously. Yes. The first black president, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And that this guy who had no enthusiasm, uh, you know, out does by a long shot. None of it adds up. It all seems kind of weird. But like you said, we are up against the break. We've got to take a quick break here. And I uh, just want to remind our viewers and listeners, this is the Conservative Commandos. I'm George Landreth. He is Dr. Nasser Sheikh. We are your Conservative Commandos hosts. We will be right back. Don't go away. But if you want to check out our website for more information, ccrshow.com is the place to go. We'll be back momentarily. Are you paying too much for your health insurance? Are your deductibles too high? Or are you completely uninsured? If you answered yes to any of these questions, Healthcare Help Desk can help you now when people need help the most. Health insurance laws and rules have changed. If you have Obamacare, are uninsured, or your premiums are too high, call Healthcare Help Desk. It's free. New health care plans are available, and you may qualify for dental coverage and lower copays and deductibles. Make the free call now. Top quality coverage at the lowest prices anywhere. You may be paying too much and not even know it. In these troubled times, health care is more important than ever. Don't let another day go by without health insurance. Policies are being offered with very low copays and deductibles. So if you're uninsured, underinsured, or paying too much, call Health Care Help Desk. Learn about your options before it's too late. Call 800-964-1055. 800-964-1055. Attention Medicare recipients and anyone turning 65. Medicare has approved new benefits not included with original Medicare and older Medicare Advantage plans. You may not be getting all of the benefits you're entitled to. These new Medicare Advantage plans may have many free new benefits including in-home aids, telephone appointments with your doctors, home-delivered meals and prescriptions. These benefits may be available and it's a free call to enroll. The easiest way to enroll is to call the Medicare Benefits Line, a free non-government service. The new plans may also offer free eyeglasses, free hearing aids, free wellness visits, and gym memberships. Call the Medicare Benefits Line now. It's easy. Find out if you're eligible for new benefits like meal and prescription delivery, in-home aids, and telemedicine. Some plans may have a $0 monthly premium or zero copays for big out-of-pocket savings. Call 800-691-1655. 800-691-1655. Medicare Benefits Line is not connected with or endorsed by any government agency or the federal Medicare program. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 800-447-7570. 800-447-7570. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos. The television show, the radio show, it's all here. 
and that's on the AUN TV network, the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, Roku, and of course, Al Gore's amazing internet. With our own website, of course, ccrshow.com. If you need anything that you've missed out on, it's all there. I'm George Landreth. He is the good doctor of our republic, Dr. Nasser Sheikh. We're glad you're here because this is the place to be. And uh, Nasser, let's, you know, we always have great guests, and today will be no exception to that rule. We uh, will have three great guests. Perhaps you could uh, just let our viewers and listeners know what we have in store for them. Well, thank you, George. Well, you know what we always say here, when you're right, you're right, and when you're left, you're wrong, and our guests are always right. So our first guest is going to be Matt Margolis. He's the author of a new book called Airborne, How the Liberal Media Weaponized the Coronavirus Against President Trump. And he's going to be talking to us about his article, Pennsylvania Lawmakers Seek to Decertify the State's Election Results, Citing Substantial Irregularities. We also have a new member to the Conservative Commanders Radio Show. Her name is Rachel Gurley. Gurley, I mean. And uh, she's a co-founder of a company called Primarily, which is spelled P-R-I-M-E-R-R-I-L-Y. And it's a parenting resource, basically, to show parents how they can raise patriotic kids. Uh, it, and like I said, it's, she's going to share with us a lot of information that parents can take and sort of, you know, uh, implement in their daily lives. And then finally, we have uh, a guest here. His name is Jason Hayes. He's the Director of Environmental Policy at the Mackinac Center in Michigan. He's going to be talking to us about the reign of tyranny with this whole COVID mandates through Governor Whitmer and also what's happening with some of the energy issues in terms of the pipeline that's running through the Upper Peninsula and how Governor Whitmer wants to basically cancel that as well. So once again, we've got three great guests here. Uh, that we're going to be introducing, and just great stuff once again here on the Conservative Commanders Radio Show, George. Absolutely. Uh, it's one of the things that makes the show so fun is we've got, uh, we always get the best guests, and, uh, we do. you know, it's, uh, it's a testament to the uh, staying power of the show, because, you know, these guests could, uh, you know, they can pick where they want to show up, and uh, fortunately, they pick us, so we're glad. But, um, you know, we were talking before uh, we talk about the guests and we're talking about what's going on in the country in terms of the elections. I think there's also, for example, um, you know, one of the things I find interesting is, is who the winners and losers are internationally. And, um, and I don't mean, like, an example, the people, because I think the people in every country are probably a lot like us, but their regimes aren't always. So, for example, in communist China, I have no ill will towards the Chinese. I actually feel that they're uh, a victim of the regime which they suffer under. But uh, it's interesting that the market, this isn't you and me, it's the market has said that Joe Biden is good for the Chinese communist regime. How do we know that? Because on election night, when it looked like Donald Trump was going to win re-election before all the chicanery with the counting started. Guess what? The international markets for the Chinese uh, currency were crashing. What happened when uh, the chicanery began and it looked like perhaps Joe Biden might win? The Chinese uh, financial markets recovered very rapidly. What does that tell you? That means it's not the conservative commandos trying to give you spin. This is people all over the globe saying, oh, yeah, it's obvious. The Chinese government, the, the communist Chinese, they want Biden because he's going to be easy on them. And the funny thing is, is they're not the only country. If you look at Iran with, the, with you know, the, its leadership, which has been repressive, and its people suffer. Again, so I don't have anything against the – I know lots of people from Iran. Uh, you know, they, they live in America. They fled their country because of exactly the thing we're talking about, which is the regime was repressive. And, um, but that regime is very hopeful that Joe Biden will be the president because that will mean more cash. It'll mean less uh, sanctions, that, that, so they'll have more capacity to fund terrorism around the globe. Um, and, you know, the, it's like, why is it that America's most strategically, you know, disruptive nations, China, you know, the, why are they all for Biden? This isn't, stri I'm trying to figure out what, what did Americans, when they, you know, if you went into the polling place and pulled the lever down for Joe Biden, 
in your voting machine or you colored in the little dot next to Joe Biden. What were you thinking? Because it can't be that what's good for China is good for America. What's good for the mullahs in Iran is good for America. And yet that's what I, I, I'm, I'm befuddled. Well, you know, you've got two. I look at it that there's two train tracks, basically, that are running. And they're sort of running in the same direction, although one, I think, is moving at light speed and the other one is basically, you know, just chugging behind. So let's take a look at the train that's running light speed. These are the big tech companies. It used to be that the Democratic Party used to be the party of the, what we call right now, middle America, middle class America, what they call the Reagan Democrats, you know, the heart and soul of this country, the Americans that really built this country. But that's changed. The Democratic Party now has become the party of the elites. It's become the party of the multimillionaires and the billionaire class. It's become the party of the Googles, the Amazons, Facebooks, the Twitters, all of that. And then that other train that's running, you know, behind at a slower speed, I think these are what we call, you know, the less educated voters, let's say, that just sort of, they're listening to, you know, they go onto Google, obviously, and they punch in a couple of, you know, letters and something pops up and they see something and they say, oh, must be true because it's on the internet. These are the same people you know, that are watching you know, all these reality shows and think that they're real. So they go down there and they pull the lever. And so you we're fighting a two-tier track here. I mean, if anybody would have known, for example, I mean, in any other universe, any other universe, if you would have found out that your son of the vice president was getting money illicitly or from a company that was in the Ukraine and getting over $182,000 a month and being compensated so that his father, the vice president, could they could have access to him, they'd be out of the running. If you had a vice president's son, along with the former stepson, uh, the stepson of John Kerry, join a venture capital funding company flying to China on Air Force Two. This is all stuff you can look on the internet, folks. This isn't somebody just making this stuff up. They go to China. They meet with Chinese officials, the Chinese bank, and some Chinese and some Chinese, um, you know, elites. They give 1.5 billion, not million, one and a half billion dollars to start a venture capital funding. When, you know, Hunter Biden and John Kerry steps in, they have no, they, they don't speak Mandarin. They don't know anything about Chinese policy. They know nothing about venture capital funding. They just formed a company a few days before. And they get the money. Why? Because Joe Biden's vice president, as you alluded to, George, these are the ones that's all going to be swept in the rug if, if Biden, you know, assumes the presidency. And now you're going to have, even Obama's State Department, if you go back and you take a look at the records, they were basically wondering and saying, hey, this is this is stuff that, you know, could happen. But guess what? When you've got the press on your side, when you've got big media on your side, you've got big tech on your side, when they can control the flow of information, you can get away with a lot. I mean, and that's exactly what's happening right now. I'm just, I just, if you and I formed a venture capital company, you're a doctor, I'm an attorney, so we both have a lot of experience. Um, you know, you probably are running a small business, you know, and, 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 I, and I do too. Um, so now let's ask ourselves, what are the chances that the Chinese Communist Party would give us billions of, of dollars to run or begin that venture capital firm. You think it's good? Well, well let's take it one step first, further, George. You and I have a small business. Let's say, for example, that somebody, if you're one of your children or one of my children, okay, was a state legislator, or let's say was a House of Representative member, or let's say he was a senator, or even a governor, let's say, and all of a sudden we went on a trip to China. And when we got back, what you're saying happened. And we were flying and we were going at the behest of our child or somebody that we knew with our family that went over there. And the reason that we got what we got was because we said, hey, if you give us this, you've got access to my son or you've got access to my father, you've got access to my uncle and we can do some quid pro quo here. That's what we're talking about. So that's what happened here. Right. It's not supposed to happen. You're not supposed to. That's cronyism. I mean, that's happened. Obviously, it's happened so many times, you know, during our, you know, you know during our nation's history. But that's what we're all supposed to try yeah. to stop. 
That's what right. President Trump was trying to do, is to bring some sanity to this insane world of politics that we call the cesspool in Washington, D.C. Right. Now, it's Yeah, it's not just cronyism. It's absolute just corruption. Stra corruption. Flat out yes. corruption. Corruption. Um, you know, people who basically get a government gig and then they use that government gig to enrich themselves, to sell access to power. It's the very thing that uh, when we talk about corruption, that's, you know, it's this is quintessential corruption. It's really stunning to me to see uh, how this plays out. But uh, sometimes the clock can be a cruel taskmaster, and it's done that to us again because time flies. It's just too much fun. And next thing you know, it's you know, telling me to, oh, alert, alert, time alert. Ah. <laughs> but anyhow. But I do want to remind our viewers and our listeners, this is the Conservative Commandos. He is Dr. Nasher Sheikh. I'm George Landreth, and we are your Conservative Commandos host today. We're glad you're with us. We will be right back with our very first guest, so don't go away. But I do want to remind you, if you've missed anything and you need a rebroadcast or more information, ccrshow.com is the place to go. Don't go away. Dr. Nasser and I will be right back. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 888-431-0562. That's 888-431-0562. 888-431-0562. Dish TV is better than cable TV. Here's why. Dish has the nation's lowest TV price, along with an award-winning DVR that can skip commercials, record eight shows at once, and get access to thousands of movies at your fingertips. Cable simply can't even compare. So the smart choice is to cut the cable and get Dish. Plus, you get all these great TV features, free HD DVR upgrade, free installation, and free movie channels. Say goodbye to cable and get more with Dish TV. 877-290-7764. 877-290-7764. As an added bonus, you can switch to Dish now and receive a $50 Visa gift card. So call now and get Dish TV. Call 877-290-7764, 877-290-7764. That's 877-290-7764. Limited time offer, 24-month commitment, and credit qualification required. Cancellation fee, monthly equipment fees, and other restrictions apply. Promotion can change at any time. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it, and folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get The Secret War free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge, from the folks at Swiss America and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The secret war is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos, the radio show and the television show carried on the AUN TV network, the Conservative Commandos radio network, and aired everywhere on Al Gore's amazing internet. 
Well, maybe not everywhere, because I don't know if China, North Korea, or Iran carry us, because I think the regimes there might object to our message of freedom. But everywhere else, we're good to go. I'm George Landreth, and I am here with the doctor of our wonderful republic, Dr. Nasser Sheikh. We're your co-host today for the Conservative Commandos. This is the place to be. I do want to remind you, if you want a rebroadcast of our show, just check out our website, ccrshow.com. It's all there. Uh, Nasser, we've got our, our guest, and that's one of the hallmarks of our show. So I'm going to leave the honor of introducing him to you. Hey, George, thank you so much. And I do believe, if I have heard correctly, you might want to fact check me on this on the AP wire. I believe that Fox News is changing their moniker to FAUS, and they have applied in Tehran, I think, for a broadcast license. So check that out. Uh, make sure that that's all you know, true and whatever, because I believe they do certainly have. Um, you know, some life to do if the Fox News ever does want to move over to Iran. Anyways, we want to introduce to you Mark, Mark Matt Margolis. He's the author of a new book, Airborne, How the Liberal Media Weaponized the Coronavirus Against Donald Trump. And I believe you have that right there, don't you? I do. It's a great book, a great read, and he's also the author of the best-selling book, The Worst President in History. Geez, let me think if we can think of who that is. Uh, let's see, that was our monarch, Barack Obama. It's the legacy of Barack Obama. And if you want to follow Matt, you can do so at Twitter at Matt Margolis. And we want to welcome Matt back to the Conservative Commanders Radio Show. So a huge big welcome. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving, Matt. Well, I had as good a Thanksgiving as you can have in New York State with uh, with the <laughs> Governor uh, Andrew Cuomo. Okay, all right. Hey, did you? What you think of where he was going to visit his mom? But then I guess the backlash. He couldn't go visit her now. <laughs> Uh, Telling yeah. everybody to stay home. It honestly was wasn't that, that surprising. About? I mean, how many times have we seen various Democrat Democrats telling us what we should be doing, and then they do the exact opposite? So it's uh, it wasn't surprising at all. You have a list, and that list would just go on. These are all the ones that have been naughty, and they certainly have not been nice. But anyways, let's talk about your article here. Pennsylvania lawmakers seek to decertify state election results, citing substantial irregularities. Now, from what we've heard is that 26 Republicans... And I believe eight in the Senate, yep. uh, the Pennsylvania Chamber, are putting together some type of a resolution. I believe Tom Wolf and Secretary of State Brockbar of Pennsylvania, they say that just because, you know, they've signed off on the signatures, you know, they're skipping and dancing and saying, hey, everything is done. But that's not true, correct, Matt? I mean, it's not until the slate of electors is certified by the legislators as they are supposed to do under Article 1, Section 4 of the Constitution. Uh, as far as I understand, the certification really doesn't mean much. It's really it's really up to the state legislatures to uh, to decide that how that process is going to happen, and that and that's that's really I think the the crux of how the uh, the Trump legal team's challenge is going forward. They they, they understand this fact and they are uh, presenting evidence to, uh, for, for these legislators to, under, to to see you know firsthand you know stuff wasn't happening. Uh, on the level with, with this election, and uh, we can't just uh, allow these bogus results to stand. You know, Matt, and I may get a little passionate here with this, but the one thing that I don't understand that nobody, nobody has seemed to answer, I mean, even when we're talking about with the Trump legal team, I mean, I don't know if they have, maybe I mis mis can't find it, but the number one question that I would like to be answered is that why in the hell well, for the first time in the history of this country that we actually had states that were swing states that stopped counting the votes. And I don't see anybody even addressing that issue at all. I mean, have you in your when you've been you know, digging into these stories, have, is there anything that you can come up with in terms of that? What is where is that question? Why? Why did it stop counting for hours on end until the wee hours of the morning? There is no explanation for it. We're being told constantly by the media and elected Democrats that it's not. It doesn't matter that uh, the the election went went perfectly smoothly, even though they spent four years saying, "Oh, did did you realize that that Russia hacked the election and stole it for for Trump?" I mean, we, we heard that for four years. If Russia could hack the 2016 elections, then uh, there there there's no reason to not believe that the election could be altered or hacked or whatever from from, from within. And we're we're starting to see. Uh, lots of evidence coming forward. We're seeing 
uh, we're seeing witnesses uh, testifying and, and uh, you know, writing out affidavits saying that this happened. And you can't just write that off. You can't just say, well, that, you know, not, that doesn't mean anything. You know, you're just, you know, you're just, uh, it's all sour grapes. You know, th this isn't sour grapes. This, this is really the future. You know, I hate to sound like a broken record, but the future of our democracy at stake is, you know, we're seeing an election that was that was likely tampered with uh, in various states and states that mattered. And, and we're seeing all sorts of statistical anomalies that that really kind of suggested that that did happen. Whether or not that ends up changing the results or not, we, we don't know yet. But we're, we're seeing we're getting enough questions that need to be answered. And uh, if we don't even attempt to get them answered, then we might as well give up because we're telling the Democrats, keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on stealing elections because nothing is ever going to happen. I mean, Matt, listen, I'll tell you what, and I'm telling all the all you spiny, weak need, OK, rhino Republicans out there. If you don't stand up with a titanium backbone out there and fight the way that Donald Trump has basically told you. Have told you people how to fight, have a spine and backbone. As far as I'm concerned, the GOP, it is absolutely dead and gone. I mean, there there needs to be a third party uprising. We're 80 million strong. We need to tell these people that if the reason that we voted for you was to protect our backs and you're not doing it, then you need to step aside or we will make you step aside when we go to vote for you. Because this is at stake. I mean, Article 1, is, Article, Article 1 Section 4, I mean, Matt, if that... If the Supreme Court doesn't uphold that, how do we even go forward? I mean, that means any supreme, any state, any Supreme Court in the in the state, any governor, any Secretary of State, can just one day before the election say, "Hey, guess what? November third, you know what? Let's just give you till December thirty first to put your vote in for president." I mean, am I just going crazy here, or what? Uh, no, I mean, th th this, these are all legitimate concerns that we that we knew were going to be a problem, and. It was unfortunate that, that the Supreme Court didn't take take up this issue before the election because it really created this whole big mess. Uh, but you know, we, I, I mean, I always knew that, particularly with Pennsylvania, that there were that there was going to be some big question marks because I knew like if, if this election is going to be stolen, uh, you know, look, look at Pennsylvania, look look at Philadelphia. That's where that's where they're going to do it. And you know, I mean, the, the fact is is that we we've known for months that that the Democrats were, were wanting to try to steal this election from the. Uh, I mean, ever since this. Uh, pandemic started, Democrats have been using it as an excuse to basically create universal uh, mail-in voting, uh, which has caused a whole lot of problems in, in various states. And, uh, you know, this is something that uh, we weren't prepared for. Many, many states that were implementing it were not prepared for. Uh, it, there's all sorts of reports of, you know, X number of ballots uh, being sent out and a whole bunch more than that was sent out actually returned. Uh, we need to get these questions answered because it's not it's not right for for us to be, uh, be to be told. Uh, well, forget these anomalies; it doesn't matter because oh, you know, Biden won all the all these votes. I mean, does anybody really believe that Biden got more votes than Barack Obama did? I mean, come on. <laughs> exactly. Now you right. No here. one you cared wasn't... about Bur about Joe Biden. No, there was no excitement for him. Absolutely, you're a hundred percent, a thousand percent correct. Now, you write in here that the resolution say that the results are prematurely certified. Uh, it goes on to say that witnesses testifying before the Pennsylvania Senate Majority Policy Committee have provided additional compelling information regarding the questionable nature of the administration of the general election. It also declares that the selection of presidential electors and other statewide electoral contests results in the Commonwealth is in dispute and urges both the Secretary of uh, the Commonwealth, Kathy Bachbar, and Governor Wolf to withdraw or vacate the certification. What is required for this to happen? And if they don't decertify, which we know Brock Barr and, and Wolf are not going to do, what does this, um, uh, in terms of what they basically put out there as this resolution, how much teeth does it have? And is this something that you think is going to go to the uh, Supreme Court at the final stages? I, um, I personally believe that the, the Trump legal team's entire strategy is getting this to the Supreme Court uh, that, you know that they've they've made no uh, secret of, of the fact that, that that they're expecting it to, to be resolved there, and everything that's happening now is just the typical process we see before they can actually get there. So uh, you know every everything that we've seen so far is kind of just you know this this precursor to what is ultimately going to be the final showdown in the, in the Supreme Court, and uh, it'll be interesting to see you know what happens whether they take it up and uh, hopefully they will, and uh, hopefully they they will. Uh, 
rule accordingly because uh you know i mean I, when we see this when we see all these irregularities happening and we're and and everyone's you know the media is telling us this is much ado about nothing uh you know that's a problem it's because we, we shouldn't want there to, to uh, an election to be illegitimate regardless of what the outcome is we should all have faith that the that the election w- was fair and right and uh if you got half the country saying that 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 they they aren't sure that this election was legitimate that's a problem and uh you know after 4 years of being told that that Russia stole the election for for Donald Trump when there was no evidence of it uh you know i i'm i really don't need to hear people tell these the same people saying that for 4 years telling us now to just move on and accept Trump a, a, as being defeated i'm not going to do that you know i mean they how many millions of dollars was spent investigating these bogus al- allegations uh, which you know uh, we received plenty of evidence that w- what's what actually happened was it wasn't the Trump campaign that was colluding with Russia. It was the Hillary Clinton campaign, and a lot of these allegations were just kind of ginned up as kind of a distraction from what they were from what the Clinton campaign was actually doing. And uh, there there was no reason uh, for, for this to have happened. You know there was all you know, all the things that all the corruption that was going on under the Obama administration in those final months uh, has gotten kind of overlooked. Uh, be, 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 because everyone was talking about Russia, 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 and oh man, Trump colluded with with Russia. We got to say he's he's a he's a Putin puppet, and all these things that we've been hearing for all this time. Enough is enough was uh, already. Let's just let's get the answers. Uh, let let's investigate this stuff. And and you know, I, I, Joe Biden should be as interested as anyone else of making sure that this election w- was legitimate. If he's con- if he was confident that he won legitimately. Then he should be. Then he should be welcoming all these audits and all these all these legal challenges to ju- to just let them happen and let them run their course. You're right. We're speaking here with Matt Margolis, who's the author of his new book, Airborne: How the Liberal Media Weaponized a Coronavirus uh, Agent, um, the Wuhan Chinese Virus Against Donald Trump. Uh, Matt, we'd like to hold you over for another segment, but we've got to take a quick break. Can you do so? Sure thing. And you're watching the Conserve Commandos Radio show on the AUN TV broadcasting system and on the Conserve Commandos radio network. And we've got to uh, take a quick break here. I'm going to send it back to George Landeth on the other side. Don't go away. We are still a capitalist country, at least for another couple of weeks or hopefully longer. So we've got to do some business with our sponsors. So stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Mom, thank God you're going to be okay. I'm so relieved. But you both should know when my time comes, I have a final expense policy with Senior Care USA. Is Senior Care USA the life insurance policy that helps loved ones pay for funeral expenses and other debts? Bill and I called to get more information. Yes, and there's an immediate payout of up to $50,000. If you're over 50, call Senior Care USA now to learn more about final expense insurance plans. There's no medical exam, even if you have a pre-existing condition like I do. When I called, the quote was free, and there was no pressure. I found out that policies start for as little as 35 cents a day. Rates will never increase and coverage won't decrease. I'm going to call today. Ask about the free prescription discount card. I'm so glad you'll be taken care of. Call 1-800-822-7419. That's 1-800-822-7419. But is it? It's really just the beginning, right? Have you written a book and want it published but don't know where to start? You're not alone. Page Publishing cuts through the confusion that most new authors face, like copyright protection, barcodes, printing, and digital uploading. We will get your book into bookstores now. We guide you through the publishing maze and help you distribute and sell your work in hard copy and ebook formats. That's right. We will digitize and place your book for sale on Amazon, Apple iBooks, and Google, offering it to millions. Don't waste another minute. Most publishers won't even look at new author submissions, but we're different. We review your book and provide you feedback in about a week. If we decide to publish your book, your work ends and ours begins. From copy editing and proofing to typesetting and book cover art, our team gets you into bookstores fast. Call 1-877-461-5033. 
Does your current bathroom need to be updated immediately? Introducing One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling. The complete and hassle-free way to get the new bathroom of your dreams in as little as one day. And for as little as $1.99 a month. Yes, the experts at One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling will come to you anywhere in the country and show you all the customized options. Now you can have a brand new bathroom in as little as one day. Large or small bathrooms, if you want a new bathtub or shower installed, we can do it in as little as one day. And if you call right now, you can save $750 off your remodel. We make it easy by offering you financing as low as $199 per month. So for as little as $199 a month, you can finally have the bathroom of your dreams. Call now to schedule your free in-home consultation. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos radio show and the television show. Thanks to, of course, the Conservative Commandos radio network broadcast all across this great nation from sea to shining sea and the AUN TV network as well, the America Uncensored News uh, network. We're, we're glad to have uh, their support as well to be able to bring you this important message. And of course, thanks to Al Gore, there's the amazing internet. So we really are just about everywhere, even if you're not near a broadcast tower. I'm George Landreth, and of course, I am here today with the doctor of our good democracy, of our republic, Dr. Nasser Sheikh. We're your co host. We're glad you're here. We've been talking with Matt Margolis. And if you missed the first half of the conversation, never fear, just go to our website, ccrshow.com. You can get a rebroadcast there and catch the whole thing. But Matt, we're glad you stuck around. We've been talking, I think, about a pretty important question, which is uh, the presidential election. Who will be the president in the next four years? And of course, the mainstream media would tell you, you know, quote unquote, we've already told you who won. Um, and I used to teach constitutional law. I'm pretty sure that's not how we make that decision. But, you know, wh what do I know? Maybe they uh, changed the Constitution as soon as I got out of teaching constitutional law and I just missed it. But um, one of the things I find interesting is that there are a lot of anomalies in the vote count. And then on top of the anomaly, you have what I would call in law this principle of consciousness of guilt. In other words, behaving like you're guilty. Um, things like not letting people observe, things like um, sending one out for the evening, say we're going to shut down counting, and then you don't shut down counting. As soon as the Republicans leave, you start counting again. In other words, you lie about it. Or you claim that there's water damage because of a water main break. We've seen these stories repeatedly in these things. So I w wanted to ask you to kind of walk us through what some of these things are that are going on because... Um, when you combine the, if you will, circumstantial evidence and in some cases, you know, affidavits and other direct evidence to the consciousness of guilt, it's kind of like, it's like you catch me in a dark alley somewhere. I've got a bag of money that has bank dye all over it. Um, and when the police comes up to me, I run off and act like I'm guilty. And then later they find me and I claim I'm not guilty. It was all just a mistake. And at some point you go, wait a minute, everything? The money with the die on it, your reaction to seeing a policeman, you know. At some point, you'd go, no, George, you're guilty. You just robbed a bank. Sit down and shut up. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, there, there's all sorts of anomalies that we've been seeing, statistical uh, irregularities. Uh, you know, we're seeing things like uh, counties that have turnout rates that are above 100%. Sometimes even, uh, uh, I think there were some that had like a 700% uh, turnout rate. Uh, we're, we're seeing uh, uh, evidence of uh, vote dumps where just an abnormally uh, uh, high number of votes for, for uh, Joe Biden uh, over Donald Trump. And we're talking about like 97 percent uh, Biden over Trump. Or, and, and sometimes uh, we're seeing uh, votes actually being taken away from Trump in certain areas. Uh, it's, so it's really um, th th there, there's, there's absolutely uh, legitimate reason to be concerned that there was something going on there. And uh, in a lot of these uh, states, we're, we're seeing, uh, uh, you know, these strange numbers that uh, would affect the outcome of the election. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, we have the media trying to tell us that, that they're the ones that decide how the election turns out, out and who the winner is. And that just isn't true. 
and uh, you know the, the the media they they kind of think themselves to be the the gatekeepers of of, of elections, but they they really aren't. It's the Constitution, and uh, there's a process that has that has to uh, go forward. And uh, I think that's you know that the Trump legal team is trying to make sure that that process happens, and that everything that that uh, all the votes that are counted are, are legal votes, and the illegal votes are not. One of the things this reminds me of um, is a scene from Star Wars. Obi-Wan Kenobi says to uh, some stormtroopers, these are not the droids you're looking for. I feel like the media is telling us this. You know, this is not the fraud. This is not enough fraud to, to overturn the election. We've already decided the election. But I feel like they're just trying to tell us um, what they would like us to accept. And uh, in the movie, of course, the stormtroopers are weak minded. So they're easily told what to think by uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. But, you know, in other subsequent versions, we saw that there were some people who were not as easily led, so to speak. They could think for themselves. Um, do you see that playing out here at all? Are there people that are just kind of like whatever the Washington Post or the New York Times tells them? They're like like mind-numb zombies? I mean, I think that's part of it. And I also think that there there is a natural tendency uh, for people to... Uh, for their opinion on, on on the legitimacy of an election to be based on the outcome, uh, we, we we've seen uh, time and time again Democrats tend to not trust the results of an election when they lose. We saw it, uh, you know, in 2000 with uh, with uh, George W. Bush. You know, they you know they they were saying it. Yeah, he's not my president, and you know he was he was uh, selected by the Supreme Court. He wasn't elected. You know, and then again in uh, 2004. They, there was uh, quite a bit uh, uh, said by a number of Democrats alleging that there were vote, voting irregularities in Ohio that uh, had they been properly investigated, they think would have uh, overturned the results in that state and just and then changed the election. Uh, you know, we, we've seen a pattern here that Democrats think that every time they lose that they were that they lost illegitimately. Uh, well, we don't see that typically with with, Republic, with Republicans when they lose. No, no one said that uh, Barack Obama stole the election from John McCain or stole the election from uh, from Mitt Romney. When Republicans lose, you know, uh, generally speaking, they they acknowledge that the process uh, occurred and that you know they they lost an election fair and square. Uh, the problem is is that in this in this case in 2020. We're seeing all sorts of evidence that that tells us that it was not a, a fair election. That there that there were things that uh, uh, are, are curious that we need to, we need to have looked into. This isn't a pattern of behavior of Republicans to say we lost we lost so it wasn't fair. So you know I, I think that we, um, we there's there's a lot of uh, effort by the media to, to dismiss this as just like. Oh, Republicans lost, and they're just they're just grasping at straws, trying to trying to find a way to overturn the results. But Republicans don't usually do this. The Republicans tend to accept defeat gracefully. And uh, the problem with this election is is that we all the the previous irregularities that we've mentioned here is that th there's a there's a point where it's there's just too much to ignore. That's a good point. Um, just quickly, um, I. I've been told many times or heard overheard many times people saying that um, that as Republicans, we need to accept the results of this election just like they did in uh, 2016. <laughs> so does that mean we get to investigate and impeach and essentially deny? I, I'm, what does that mean? I don't know what they think. I don't know what they're smoking because, I mean, Hillary Clinton was saying uh, just a couple of months ago that the election was stolen from her. They've never accepted the results of the 2016 election. Yeah. So, she also said she could beat him again. Right. So, so I mean, let's, I mean, let's, let's look at what, what, what happened here and, and, and realize that we don't owe the Democrats anything in terms of just accepting the results of the election because, well, I mean, they never accept the results of elections that they lose. Uh, I'm not saying that we should just do it out of spite, but what you know, for me, it's you know, I look at what happened and I see these reports and I and I and I see that there's all these affidavits of people saying this happened and that happened, and I can't just say, all right, fine, he lost. Let's I'll just move on and get on my get on with my life, and you know, Biden is the president elect. I'm not going to do that. I want to be sure that the election was legitimate. 
if the election proves to be, to, if, the, if, if we find that there was some fraud and it doesn't overturn the results, I'll accept that. But I want an investigation. I want to know what really happened. And there seems to be an effort by the media and Democrats for us not to find out what happened. It's not, I mean, they, they don't want us to, it's not a question about overturning the, it's a question of let's see what happened. And if, and they don't want us to see what happened and you have to ask yourself why. It's a very, very salient question. What happened and why? And uh, well, Matt, in our remaining moments, if you could tell our listeners and our, and our viewers how they can get a hold of your book, how they can follow your work, all things Matt, that that would be uh, very useful because we love having you on the show. But the fact is, you're always doing good stuff. So they need to know in between those visits what you're up to. Uh, well, uh, I write pretty much daily over at uh, pjmedia.com. And, uh, you know, I have quite a few books out, you know, in addition to uh, Airborne. Uh, I also uh, write a, uh, edit editorial cartoons with, with a very talented illustrator, uh, which are syndicated over at townhall.com. And uh, you can also find me on Twitter at, at Matt Margolis. Excellent. Matt Margolis, great interview. Great to talk with you. Appreciate it. Uh, recommend that folks follow you and, and get a hold of your book because I think they'll find it very illuminating and it'll help answer that important question, what happened. But uh, we do have to go. We're up against the clock. I just want to remind our viewers and listeners, this is the Conservative Commandos. I, Dr. Nasser Sheikh and I will be right back after these messages, so don't go away. And if you've missed anything, you can always go to our website and get rebroadcast, ccrshow.com. Attention homeowners, do you have a house that's in need of serious repairs? Do you have tenants that never seem to make their monthly payments? How about code violations, past due taxes, or maintenance costs you just can't afford? Then call my friends right now with Quick Cash Offer. They specialize in buying any home, no matter how ugly the situation. Turn that problem property into cash right now. It's just that simple. One call and you can get rid of that home headache forever. They buy the ugliest houses with instant closings, instant cash, and huge savings. Plus, there are no realtor fees, no listing fees, and no repair costs. Just cash in your hands for that painful property. They're buying a few more houses in your neighborhood this month. So take advantage of this cash offer and call Quick Cash Offer now. 855-296-8854. 855-296-8854. That's 855-296-8854. Listen carefully. If your student loan debt is overwhelming you and things seem hopeless, we've got great news. If you're still struggling with your student loan debt, there are government programs available that may actually lower your payments by consolidating your federal student loans. Just call us. We'll review your situation and work with you to consolidate your debt. In many cases, depending on your situation, we can lower your monthly payments in half or more. It doesn't matter how much you owe or how far behind you are. Even if you're in default, call us right now to find out how we can lower your payment in half immediately. You can stop the harassing phone calls and the wage garnishments. All you need to do is pick up the phone and call us right now. We can remove your default status, consolidate your federal student loans, lower your payments, and we can do it today. Stop worrying. This is a real solution that can help. So please call us right now. Call 800-917-8671. Are you over the age of 50? One peace of mind in financial security for your family? Here's an important message to you and all seniors from the Final Expense Insurance Hotline. The average funeral costs about $7,000, even more. And the most government benefits will pay your family is only $255. That leaves your loved ones with a burden of paying your debts and funeral costs. Our plans start as low as a dollar per day and will pay up to $30,000 for your funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam and you'll have lifetime coverage. 
Plus, your rates will never increase and your plan cannot be canceled, regardless of your medical condition, as long as you make your premium payments. Get free information right now. Just answer a few simple questions and get approved right over the phone in just a few minutes. Call right now. Call 855-221-7334. Do you have an idea for an invention, but you don't know what to do next? How do you get in front of companies or get a patent? Call InventHelp. They've been helping inventors just like you for 35 years. And thousands of people contact them every month. With 65 offices, you can meet with an InventHelp representative near you who will keep your idea confidential and explain their invention process step by step. InventHelp has helped over 10,000 inventors get patents. And they offer 3D animations and prototyping services to help demonstrate your idea. InventHelp's exclusive data bank includes over 9,000 companies who have agreed to confidentially review new ideas, like yours. Don't wonder what to do next. Take action right now and get the help you need from InventHelp. InventHelp. Call today for free information. 800-880-2937. That's 800-880-2937 now. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos, the radio show and the television show. Thanks to the AUN TV network, the America Uncensored News Network, and of course, thanks to the Conservative Commandos radio network, broadcast all across this great nation. But if you are not near one of the many broadcast towers, never fear, because Al Gore comes to the rescue. His amazing internet. We are we're everywhere. It's uh, both of the Roku channel, and on top of that, you can get us on iHeartRadio. You name it, we are there. Our own website, ccrshow.com. I'm George Landreth, and I am here with uh, my tremendous co-host, the doctor of our republic, Dr. Nasser Sheikh. And uh, Nasser, to you it falls the honor of introducing our next guest, and uh, I'll let you take it over from here. Well, thank you, George. We have Rachel Jurley. She works in corporate retail by day and by night. She's one of the three co-founders of the company called Primarily, which is spelled P-R-I-M-E-R-R-I-L-Y. She focuses on our next generation of patriots, the conservative moms on parenting patriots. She's a graduate of Cornell University. She's a locally elected official in the town of Mount Kisco, New York. And she's also a mom to her um, preschool age son, Kate. Rachel, we want to welcome you to the Conserve Commanders Radio Show. Thank you so much, Nasser. It's such an honor to be here. I'm only well, sorry that my two other co-founders, Ali Pillinger Choi and Britt Reiner, couldn't be here because they're more articulate, intelligent <laughs> but, than I. But alas, after school activity is called, so <laughs> it was, that's that's what it's being about. You know, parenting. We're talking about, and this is something that I talk about. You know, on my shows and when we do other things, is that we are facing something that I call a planetary pandemic virus, a PPV. And this is being brought on by the Marxist mainstream media, the globalists and the elitists, who are basically indoctrinating, propagandizing our children at an early age from kindergarten into the aspects of socialism, fascism, ISISism, Marxism, you know, communism, and I think they're trying to make it look like that we can Americanize these institutes. We can do, you know, we can do Nazism better than the Nazis did. We can do, you know, communism better than communism. Marx, Karl Marx had it all wrong. We can do an American form of Marxism. And I have seen parents that are crying because their kids go to college, the 17, 18, they come back after a semester or one year later and they go, what happened to my child? What changed? And I tell people that if they don't, if they're not grounded in what you're talking about, conservative principles at an early age, and I mean from kindergarten, first grade on, you're going to lose these children. So give us a sense of what primarily is doing, the background story, how it all came to fruition, and what are you doing so other parents can basically say, hey, this is how we need to teach conservatism to our children. Please go. Nasser, you're so right. And we have heard stories that would just make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. And a lot of that came to light because of this pandemic and people listening in to what's happening in the virtual classroom. Um, but if you're waiting until your kids are 17 and 18 and going to college, it's too late to talk to them about conservative values now. And we are seeing earlier and earlier things like the pledge being removed from classrooms, 
or just recently one of our daughters came home. She's in the first grade, and she had just finished a segment learning about Greta Thunberg, the 16-year-old climate change activist. This is all before they've spoken a word about George Washington. American values are being lost and civic participation along with it. And that's when woke culture reaches our children. If you leave parenting to, to the media, to the prevailing culture, to the education system, you will have a woke child. Um, we were just reading The Rainbow Fish last night here at my house. And I don't know if you remember that book, but for any listeners who aren't familiar with the premise, it's this children's book that's very popular, a classic. And, and it's about this, this fish that has these beautiful, beautiful scales. He's gorgeous and shiny, and he's surrounded by a bunch of drab fish. And he's basically peer pressured to give his scales away to the other fish so that he can fit in. What are we telling our kids to do? So many of, of the things that you cherish as a child, you look back as an adult and you think, what, are, what was I learning? What was I teaching? And at Primarily, we're really aiming to be a parenting resource that passes along American founding values to the next generation through fun crafts, through curated stories, through book recommendations, through guided conversations. We're supporting parents with ideas to instill respect, dignity, honor, character, empathy, heritage, all the things that we value as conservatives, because we really believe that we can make civics fun, we can make patriotism cool, and we can make civility about old school kindness instead of political correctness. It just requires really intentional, active parenting. You know, Rachel, how can, how can parents, see, that's the other thing. I think parents, for the most part, maybe I'm putting too much emphasis on this, but I think a lot of parents out there, look, they're working two jobs, maybe three jobs, just trying to make ends meet you know, trying to put food on the table and just trying to go to, you know, the hockey games and the soccer games and the Little League games. And there's so many hours in a day. And I think they leave the teaching to teachers because they're thinking the teachers are going to teach their kids what they need to know. And they can focus on the other things at home. The problem is they're not doing that. How does a parent, for example, when they see that the school is going to be inviting in a drag queen to, you know, read to their children? Not that I'm saying that we shouldn't I'm not being in a way where I think we should be accepting of people, obviously, but I think there needs to draw a line to say, why are we teaching our children in kindergarten that it's, you know, these type of things? Or, for example, just in, 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 in terms of, um, you know, having people come in from the outside, you do realize in many school districts, you, as a parent, you don't have to sign a piece of paper giving your child permission to hear how to put a condom on a banana if somebody comes in from the outside. But I need to try and triplicate with my blood signing, okay, if I want to give my daughter Tylenol and the teacher has to give it in school. So how do parents fight this, Rachel? How do they do it? You, you should join our team. <laughs> um, because you're so right. And we're not saying we're perfect parents, but we're recognizing that we're trying to be more intentional parents with the time we do have. I'm a working mom, I get it. I'm just trying to do the things that I'm already doing with more intention. So children are sponges at the ages we're targeting. We're looking at preschool and elementary age kids. So if they're sponges, what are they absorbing? Children love to play, but what are the rules that we're teaching them? We want them to absorb American values, learning about America, growing up in America. It's supposed to be this fun, exciting adventure where anything is possible. But we also recognize that there are limitations and they'll also get taught at school, maybe values that don't align with your own. So the first thing I tell every parent of a school-aged child to do, ask for a copy of the curriculum. You need to know what's coming so that you can have conversations and play offense instead of defense. If, if they're talking about the climate, then maybe it's an opportunity to talk about how you're taking, um, taking action in your own home instead of relying upon others to do it for you, or how much impact can we really have and which things will really make a difference. It's not about being the perfect parent, um, but if we each kind of thread the needle and share our stitch, then we might just like strengthen the fabric of our nation and hopefully the character of the next generation. But now, it really requires teamwork. <laughs> well, the other question is that in terms of um, homeschooling, 
Uh, I'm sure you get a lot of questions for that. For those parents that are able to do that, or maybe some makes a conscious decision that says, you know what, I think I'm going to leave my job, and maybe the mom decides to stay home, or maybe in some instances the dad decides to stay home if the mom is, you know, working or whatever. However, you know that those parents decide that they want to do this. So, where, um, in terms of homeschooling, uh, I'm sure you—that's uh, one of your advocacies as well, correct? For those that can do it and um, and, and support that. I so admire. The, the parents that choose to homeschool that really take the educational burden on themselves because there's no higher calling. And actually, one of our contributors who just wrote a piece for our site about a letter to his children about why he joined the Navy, he was homeschooled all through school, ended up going to Dartmouth and being student body president. So there are amazing outcomes for homeschool, but it doesn't have to be all homeschool or all traditional school. There's an opportunity for parents to layer in um, the best of the ideas from the homeschool community or from the traditional school community and really share, the homeschool community is great at this, at sharing great ideas of lesson plans, of conversation guides, and that's kind of the gap that we want to fill. Because when you look back at how the American experiment got started, you think of individuals as isolates in a vacuum, but they weren't. And we're not intended to parent in a vacuum either. Just like they were colleagues, they were friends, they were neighbors, they were communities, and they banded together to form a more perfect union based on life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Their very actions breathe life into civic virtue. And that's what we're hoping to do. If we all share our best practices, me, my co-founders, you, your viewers, um, all these little ideas, compiling them into one place to add on meaning to what you're already doing, we can really affect the fabric of the next generation. For example, the Tooth Fairy. The Tooth Fairy is a virtual treasure trove of civic conversation. So when you're picking the currency that goes under that pillow, there's a lot of iconography in there. There's the Sacagawea dollar, there's the Susan B. Anthony dollar, there's the Kennedy half dollar, the Jefferson $2 bill. You can teach American history just by the currency that you choose to put under the pillow. There's all these little things that don't require going and buying new craft supplies and setting aside hours, but instead are just a new way of talking to your kids about things you're doing already. You could probably teach them tax policy by after you give them the money, say, hey, if you're a Democrat, we're going to take that away from you. But if you're a Republican, you get to keep your money. You have to read our article about Halloween candy. We actually tax our kids Halloween candy this year. Depending on the state that you live in, more gets taken, and that candy gets sent to the troops overseas. So it, it does double duty, great lesson, and giving back. Classic, classic. Listen, um, Rachel, we'd love to hold you over for another segment, but we've got to go to our sponsors. Can you do so? I would love to. Well, thank you. Well, we're here speaking speaking with Rachel Jerley. She's uh, in corporate retail by day, but she's one of the three co-founders of a company called Primarily, which is spelled P-R-I-M-E-R-R-I-L-Y. And I think, in, if I read correctly, they say that you can go to a site called ParentingAPatriot.com because sometimes people spell primarily wrong. So if you go to ParentingAPatriot.com, it'll show you how these conservative moms are teaching how to parent the next generation of our patriots. And you're watching and listening to us on the Conservative Commanders Radio Network and on the AUN TV broadcasting system in California. We're also on iHeartRadio, 247.com, Talk America Live. And I'm, I'm here with my co-host, George Lambert, on the other side. But we are still a, a, a capitalist nation so far, so we've got to do some business with our sponsors. So stick around, hang around. We will be back with Grateful Jerry Lee in just a, in just a few minutes. Here's a great way to save money on your prescription medications. If you take Viagra or Cialis, we can give you a way to pay as little as $2 a pill. Compare that to prices as high as $60 per tablet. Call now with your prescription and pay as little as $2 a pill. We offer 24-7 service and always free delivery and confidential packaging. Call Pharmacy Shop 24-7 to get generic versions of Viagra or Cialis 
for as little as $2 a pill, plus free discreet shipping. Broken AC, $4,600. Water heater, $1,500. Fridge on the fritz, a thousand bucks. You need home warranty coverage from the Home Service Club for around a dollar a day. If any of your covered appliances and systems break down, HSC will either repair or replace them. HSC provides coverage of up to 47 different appliances and systems in your home. I trust HSC. HSC has over 15,000 pre-screened, highly rated technicians with the fastest response time in the industry. They cover everything from ACs, stoves, fridges, pool pumps, and more. Call the number on your screen now for a free no-obligation quote from a trusted HSC specialist about a home warranty for your entire home, backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Call now and get one month free plus $75 off your first year of coverage. One month free and $75 off your first year. The Home Service Club. I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for dental visits. Did you? I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for transportation to my doctor. Did you? I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay to have my prescriptions delivered directly to my home. Did you? These and more are important benefits some Medicare Advantage plans may give you. So if you're eligible for Medicare, call us right now because you may be eligible to enroll in a plan with amazing additional benefits. Some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for services like these. Dental visits, vision coverage, hearing coverage, home delivery of drugs, even gym memberships. Some plans may include no copays for many services and zero deductibles. Don't wait to find out if you're eligible to enroll in a plan that may include some of these wonderful benefits you deserve. Call us right now. The call is free, the information is free, and there's no obligation. Make this free call now to learn if you're eligible to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan that may include additional benefits you want. Call us right now. Here's a great way to save money on your prescription medications. If you take Viagra or Cialis, we can give you a way to pay as little as $2 a pill. Compare that to prices as high as $60 per tablet. Call now with your prescription and pay as little as $2 a pill. We offer 24-7 service and always free delivery and confidential packaging. Call Pharmacy Shop 24-7 to get generic versions of Viagra or Cialis for as little as $2 a pill, plus free discreet shipping. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos radio show, the television show, the AUN TV network, the Conservative Commandos radio network, our own Roku channel as well, as well as Al Gore's amazing internet with TalkStream Live, iHeartRadio, and of course our own website, ccrshow.com, where you can get rebroadcast of everything and more information. It's all there, thanks to Al Gore. What a guy! Um, anyhow, I... I hope people catch the sarcasm with that part of it. But at any rate, <laughs> we truly are everywhere. That I'm not sarcastic about. And I'm glad that you stuck around, and I'm not sarcastic about that either. I'm George Landreth, and of course, I am with the doctor of our republic, Dr. Nasser Sheikh. And we've been talking with our guest, Rachel Jurley. She is... Uh, just been really sharing, I think, a powerful message with us about the need to be purposeful in how we talk to our children when we talk to them about things that of like American values that matter. And uh, their organization primarily, I think, is uh, very, very needed. When I look around and I see what, for example, a lot of 20-something-year-olds and my own 20-something-year-olds tell me this, they shake their head and say, Dad, you have no idea how stupid my peers are <laughs> and, uh, and how little they know. And, and one of the things they say, I'm not sure they're wild about when they were kids, is that they liked the fact that we held what we called debate society. And debate society was just when we had dinner together as a family. I would usually pitch them some news event or news story, um, and I would generally pitch it in a way that might be more congruent with what they might hear at school, for example, from a more liberal teacher, maybe. Um, because I spent other time t telling them why conservatism works. I teach constitutional law and those kinds of things, economics and also um, political science. So as a result, I, I'd give them lots. But there I wanted them to u take those skills, take that knowledge, and then dissect what I'd thrown at them and tell me what was wrong with what I had to say. And uh, to me, that turned out to be valuable because now they're getting so much of that, they're now practiced at tearing it apart and saying, yeah, that's a bunch of bunk and this is why. But I gather that's what you're talking about because you're not really talking about to do this job, you've got to pull your kids out of school or you've got to do X or Y. It's more about making 
choices is how you use your time with them. So let's talk a little about that. Absolutely. So it, your story about the dinner table reminds me of what President Reagan said. He said, let me offer lesson number one about America. All great change in America starts at the dinner table. So primarily is really created to be a virtual dinner table. We're trying mm -hmm. to band together to say, how did you explain the Supreme Court to your preschooler? When they're in third grade, are they old enough to understand the Electoral College? How can we demonstrate it through an election of Cheetos versus Oreos? What's the best snack? We have all of these creative ideas to explain to young minds even heavy topics like 9-11, because we really think that if you wait until teenage years, it is too late. And what I love most about Primarily is that we have this fantastic network of, of contributors, of people who've thought of ideas and sent them in. And it really, um, we call it front porch parenting, because it harkens to a days when um, moms and dads would sit on the front porch and kids would play in the street and everyone kind of kept an eye out for the neighbor. And there's no way you could come up with all of this on, on your own. So maybe we get some amazing dinner table discussion guides from Rick and other um, awesome book recommendations from uh, Nasser. And there's just so much content that if we can compile it in one place, then every time you have a child's birthday, you're throwing a party anyway, how can you make it more meaningful? Which, by the way, I love our idea on that one. Um, one of them was to give the child two envelopes at every birthday, and one has a new privilege in it, and the other has a new responsibility. So you teach with age comes power, and with power comes responsibility. Um, and that's a tradition that we've already started in this house and kind of grows with them. But there's also things that are focused on, like, preschool age crafts. It kind of runs the gamut, and it's really whatever fits in to what you're already doing. That makes a lot of sense. I used to teach them the idea of separation of powers with a, I'd, I'd pop out a Twinkie or something like that, and I'd give one of them a knife, and I'd say, okay, this is the rules. You, my, to maybe my son, you get to cut that however you want, and then you get to tell the other person which piece is theirs, and then you get to keep the piece that you want to keep. And of course, they largely would try to like scrape off a crumb. Uh, and then they, of course, take the big piece, the Twinkie, and then the other kid would get the crumb. And I'd say, okay, now we're going to change it. And we, I'd let the other person do the same thing so it was fair. And then I'd say, okay, now we're going to change the rules. We're going to have separation of powers, and I'm going to let you cut, and you get to pick. And then they'd always ask me for a ruler because they wanted <laughs> to be very precise. But, um, and then I said, see how changing the rules uh, and having separation of powers changes the outcome? It was a little more fair. It took into account more people's cons uh, interests and so forth. But I think you're right. If you teach your children these things, all of a sudden now, if someone told my kids, separation of powers is a really old idea. It's just kind of, it's outdated. They'd look at you and go, no, it still works today. It deals with human nature, dude. You're stupid. Sure. <laughs> we used to do something similar to prevent fights. And if only it was explained in the way that you just explained it, then it would have been a lesson. You know, there's, there's always that underlying thing. If you're going to serve dessert tonight at dinner, look in the Patriots' almanac and see what happened today in history. Maybe it's the day your town was incorporated. Maybe man landed on the moon. Maybe there's something to celebrate in American history, and you can make dessert about that. There's always a layer of intention that you can layer into whatever you're already planning to do. Yeah, that makes a big difference uh, because what you, we're all busy. We've all got lots, you know, we, and, and so you're not suggesting that we need to spend an extra two hours a day teaching our kids civics. You're talking about you're going to have dessert with your kids anyhow. You're going to celebrate their birthday anyhow. You're going to do all these things anyhow. You'll have dinner with them. Use those moments to their fullest advantage. Don't let them sift through your hands the way, a, 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 you know, a, a, a shovel full of sand might. You know, make right. sure and that, that's really what I'm hearing is that the, you, you have a bunch of ideas on how to purposefully use the time you're already investing in your children to its greatest advantage. And it's still being fun. We hope so. We hope so. We know that, um, you know, this all kind of spun out of this Lincoln quote. He said that the philosophy of the schoolroom in one generation is the philosophy of government in the next. And so we realized that the schoolroom was not going to give the philosophy that we wanted. And so it became more and more important to start earlier. 
Um, and once we started, we were just having so much fun because we really believe that the conservative values are the best approach for human flourishing. And they're also so much fun at home. Like when we talk about race, we don't talk about victimhood with children. Um, we asked the same first grader, um, how many black children were in her class? And she said, I don't know, should I ask? And we said, you can't, how many white children? I haven't asked anyone. <laughs> They don't understand. And so what we do is instead of teaching about victimhood and com condemnation of the country, we, we go and eat out. We eat at Korean restaurants and we go to Harlem and we celebrate culture um, instead of always seeing it through such a negative light. We really love being American. And, um, and uh, something that's so valuable, my son's only, he's only two and a half now. And so it's all about visuals. Like in the art of war, Sun Tzu said that on the field of battle, the spoken word doesn't carry, hence the institution of gongs and drums and ordinary objects can't be seen, hence banners and flags. What is surrounding your child? What's in their classroom is one thing. And then what's in their home? You're showing them what you value by what you put on the refrigerator, by what you hang on your flagpole and the traditions around putting those things up or applauding them even the compliments you give them shows them what you value as a family. So it doesn't have to be extra work. You're right. It can really just be a celebration of what's already going on that's going right. I think that's really sound advice. Um, Rachel, can you just s make sure that our listeners and our viewers know how they can take advantage of the great resources that you all are putting together? Because... Um, I have a feeling a lot of Americans have looked at what's happened in the last year or so, and they've seen religious rights taken away and, and you know, rioting called peaceful protesting and questions asked by newscasters, things like, where does it say it has to be a peaceful protest? You know, um, and, you know, and wondering what happened. So they, they want to fix it, and, and you've got some great resources for them. So tell them how they can follow you. Thank you so much. Yes, so primarily is not spelled how it sounds. So we've made it easier to get to the site by you just go to parentingapatriot.com and it will redirect you there. The word primarily is a portmanteau of the New England Primer of Education and merrily down the stream primarily. Um, so you can also follow us at that on Instagram. It's one R, two L's and get some of our ideas there. We're hopefully coming out with more channels, maybe maybe a podcast, maybe YouTube, all down the road. But like I mentioned, we're busy moms. <laughs> we're doing our best to raise the next generation of patriots. And thank you guys both for all that you're doing for the movement. We really appreciate you sharing your platform with us. Absolutely. We are glad to have you on the show because this is important. Uh, the reality is it's not enough to complain about what's happening today. We have to prepare the next generation so that they can uh, be a positive force. And you've got some great ideas. So I appreciate it very much. Um, but to our listeners and our viewers, this is the Conservative Commandos. I'm George Landreth and Dr. Nasher Sheikh and I will be right back after these messages. Are you paying too much for your health insurance? Are your deductibles too high? Or are you completely uninsured? If you answered yes to any of these questions, Healthcare Help Desk can help you now when people need help the most. Health insurance laws and rules have changed. If you have Obamacare, are uninsured, or your premiums are too high, call Healthcare Help Desk. It's free. New healthcare plans are available, and you may qualify for dental coverage and lower copays and deductibles. Make the free call now. Top quality coverage at the lowest prices anywhere. You may be paying too much and not even know it. In these troubled times, health care is more important than ever. Don't let another day go by without health insurance. Policies are being offered with very low copays and deductibles. So if you're uninsured, underinsured, or paying too much, call Health Care Help Desk. Learn about your options before it's too late. Call 800-964-1055. 800-964-1055. Attention Medicare recipients and anyone turning 65, Medicare has approved new benefits not included with original Medicare and older Medicare Advantage plans. You may not be getting all of the benefits you're entitled to. These new Medicare Advantage plans may have many free new benefits including in-home aids, telephone appointments with your doctors, home delivered meals and prescriptions. These benefits may be available and it's a free call to enroll. The easiest way to enroll is to call the Medicare Benefits Line, a free non-government service. 
The new plans may also offer free eyeglasses, free hearing aids, free wellness visits, and gym memberships. Call the Medicare Benefits Line now. It's easy. Find out if you're eligible for new benefits like meal and prescription delivery, in-home aids, and telemedicine. Some plans may have a $0 monthly premium or zero copays for big out-of-pocket savings. Call 800-691-1655. 800-691-1655. Medicare Benefits Line is not connected with or endorsed by any government agency or the federal Medicare program. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 800-447-7570. 800-447-7570. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos, the radio show and the television show, thanks to the AUN TV network, the America Uncensored News Network, of course also the Conservative Commandos radio network, and then if you're not near one of the many broadcast towers, never fear because Al Gore's amazing internet is there. You've got uh, iHeartRadio, you've got, uh, well, all the different kinds of AMF and 24-7, we've got our own website, you've got a Roku channel as well, so uh, our website, ccrshow.com. I am. Uh, I'm excited. We have our next guest here, Nasser. So I will. I will uh, hand the ball off to you and let you introduce him. Thank you, George. We have Jason Hayes. He's the director of the Environmental Policy at the Mackinac Center and the co-author of a new report that shows Governor Whitmer, or I should say, um, you know, fascist dictator Whitmer's campaign to close the Line Five pipeline, even temporarily, that would leave residents of the Upper Peninsula vulnerable to price spikes and shortage of propane. He states that given that approximately 23 households in the UP use propane to heat their homes, a supply shortage during the winter could be disastrous. So we want to welcome you, Jason, to the Conserve Commandos radio show. Great. Thanks for having me on. Well, let's talk about this reign of tyranny, this reign of fascism that Governor Whitmer has established. And we've seen this so many times, Jason. I mean, we talk about, you know, Governor Cuomo, right, in terms of where he said everybody stay at home. But then we heard, suppose that he was going to visit his 89-year-old mother. Now, look. We all have parents. I mean, I wouldn't want anybody not to be visiting, but it's a hypocrisy that these guys do. Then you heard what happened over there, you know, Governor, you know, Gavin Newsom, saying everybody stay at home, you know, you can't have more than two or three people, and yet he goes to a birthday party with medical professionals who were putting some of these COVID restrictions in place, and he says, oh, didn't have any idea that there was going to be people at a birthday party, not this many, no masks, no nothing. Then we had the governor of New Jersey. He's going out to eat. He has no mask on. And the whole thing happened with Governor Whitmer and her husband. Remember he making the phone call when he wanted that boat uh, people to come out to make his, I don't know, have his boat come off the slip or whatever. It said, well, would it help to say that I'm the husband of the governor? So all these mandates are for the masses, but not for the classes. Give us her reign of tyranny of what she's talking about and how this could impact some of these people with this shortage of propane. Hopefully not to happen, but if it does, we're talking a disaster in uh, Michigan. Yeah, the, the coronavirus or COVID restrictions have been an ongoing thing. And um, really, if you look on our website, and I'll tell you about that, uh, how to get there later, but um, you can see uh, the Mackinac Center has written quite a bit about the coronavirus responses. And for the most part, that, that response has been what Governor Whitmer wants when Governor Whitmer wants it. And that's one of the reasons why the Mackinac Center was involved with taking the state government to uh, the Michigan Supreme Court, and we actually won in that regard. And the governor's executive orders were ruled unconstitutional beyond a certain date. It was in late April. And so they actually had to roll some of those back. And then uh, what happened is pretty much uh, she just kind of went back at it again and put in many of the same sort of restrictions through Michigan's Department of Health and Human Services. So um, we, we're still going through the same sort of uh, restrictions or many of the same restrictions, but just through a different means. And as that relates to line five, the 
it's it's separate from coronavirus, but the 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 attitude is is very similar. So what happened was Michigan's governor again just pronounced one day that she was going to revoke the easement, the the legal contract that allows the company that operates line five the the pipeline, uh, the company's Enbridge, which is based out of Edmonton, Alberta. But basically, she's just going to revoke the the easement, and by May uh, next year, she has ordered the company to stop. Uh, transporting oil, uh, light crude oil and natural gas liquids through the pipeline. And so again, it's that that same sort of, you just get an announcement that comes out of Lansing and then everybody needs to essentially step into line and follow the order. So the question that I always ask is, you know, we have, it's just amazing that supposedly we're in a country where we have laws. And then always like this, the Supreme Court, I mean, just like, you know, Justice Alito, he made that law in Pennsylvania that said segregate the ballots. Nobody segregated the ballots. You know, nothing's going to happen to people. So she just decides to, you know, dictatorially put her powers there, test the waters. The Supreme Court of Michigan comes in and says that's unconstitutional. And then she just decides to do something and sidestep it. So is it that you just have to continue to play this game now of, you know, cat and mouse, basically, that she so starts something, you get the attorneys, you take the Supreme Court, they rule it unconstitutional, and then they just take it the next step and sort of it's like changing a molecule on a structure and just continue to do that? Is that what Michiganders have to look forward to in the future? Yeah, in many ways, that is what's happening because, again, she's just switched from executive orders coming from the governor's mansion to having her uh, Health and Human Service, HHS, uh, in the state, that that state agency order many of the same things. Again, it's not the exact same orders. Some of her previous orders have been rolled back, uh, but especially now as we're going through kind of the second wave in Michigan, we're we're getting uh, increased transmission, and in that we're seeing many of those same things come back up, just the same as they had before. So yes, Michigan residents are just having to kind of uh, we weave our way through all of these because in a lot of ways, many of these orders are extremely complex. They're difficult to understand, especially if you're running a small business or something like that. You're just kind of left to pick it out and, and figure out and hope that you're following the law. And if you don't, well, there's consequences. You could be fined. I mean, we had um, uh, clients in our court cases that were you know, threatened by different levels of uh, state agencies that they could lose licenses to operate and they could have their businesses closed. They could face fines. There was, you know, many of those sorts of things. And then there's also the the other pressures that are associated with, I mean, anybody, any human is going to be concerned about the, the virus because, again, this, we don't really know in a lot of ways what to expect from this virus. So people are already concerned and anxious about about the virus, but then to have those extra, um, you know, just the the laws that are difficult to understand, that are that seemingly arbitrary and just coming out of left field, um, you know, you just have to add all that on top. You know, Jason, give us a sense. First of all, they said about twenty three households up in the Upper Peninsula areas um, of Michigan will be affected. Well, what is the demographic? Are we talking more? Um, this is the rural areas, obviously. Are these more Republican red areas and blue? Typically, yes. The the UP tends to be what you would expect: rural, um, conservative values. You know, they they hunt, they uh, work in industry, building trades, that kind of thing. They they tend to drive their pickups, and it's it's what you would expect. I mean, it's it's the kind of people that I worked with uh, when I worked as a forester in British Columbia or a backcountry ranger in Br- British Columbia. They're salt of the earth kind of people. The people that do the hard work that provide a lot of the resources and, and food and that sort of thing that, that keeps states operating. So, you know, they're, they're the people that, that really are out there breaking their backs, doing the work to keep the state going. I mean, it was one thing to, for example, you know, I can, on, on some level perhaps, that when this in first initially happened, you know, people were scared and they put the mandates out to close down businesses, bars, restaurants, and those things, you know, in what basically like, you know, we're in the congested areas. But they were putting these COVID restrictions out in the Upper Peninsula too. Like you know, what, if you're going out on a boat out there or whatever, I mean, you know, two people in a boat. I mean, this is just unbelievable. as what's right. happening. Give us a sense right now, Jason, as to what has happened to business. I mean, Detroit was already on its way down, and you mm-hmm. know, they were saying trying to make a comeback. I mean, what's happened to the businesses? What's happened to local bars and and bar? I mean, the, the barbershop guy. I mean, he was right. somebody that won his case. So give us a sense. I mean. Michiganders, businesses, and whatever, are some of these never going to come back like we're hearing across the country, these business, small businesses? Yeah, a lot of the small businesses are struggling. 
and um, unfortunately, many of them are struggling because of the the sort of uh, mindset that I mean, there are some people who just almost it seems like they live to report it when somebody is doing something that's against the rules or, you know, somebody they perceive that somebody is breaking a rule somewhere. So they need to call and they need to report on them. That sort of thing is extremely uh, frustrating to see when you come from uh, like me, kind of a libertarian background, which is uh, you leave me alone and I'll leave you alone. We can live our lives. So to see that willingness of people to sort of report on each other or spy on each other is extremely um, depressing in a way. But yeah, many of the, the small businesses are struggling financially because they they literally had their doors locked by the state government. So if you run a, a restaurant or something like that for the first uh, you know several weeks of this, uh, the lockdowns that we had in March and April, May, a lot of those businesses were not allowed to serve customers in their business. Now, throughout the summer, they did open back up and they were allowed to serve uh, like restaurants and, and bars and that kind of thing. They were allowed to uh, have outdoor service. Um, currently, I believe in Michigan, if you're going to serve customers inside, you you are maxed out at 25% capacity. So it's nothing like uh, the normal times where you could you know, fill up a, a, a restaurant and, and have plenty of customers. So even though the restaurants and that are still open, those people are, are struggling because 25% capacity maximum. Uh, you know, a lot of areas you're allowed to have a maximum of 10 people in a room. Those are the kind of restrictions that are placed on, on these businesses. Uh, movie theaters, for example, were closed just until uh, a few weeks ago in Michigan. So, I mean, all of those businesses are still paying for the electricity that goes into their buildings. They're still paying mortgages. Uh, in some cases, they would still be paying some salaries because they would have, you know, annual uh, employees. But I mean, for the part-time workers that are employed by restaurants, movie theaters, all those sorts of places, they are, are you know, just out of work. Now, yeah. in, in other areas, there are some, some uh, like fast food businesses appear, at least in my town, to be doing very well. Like there's lineups uh, for the drive through that go back out to the road. So it's some, some are, are handling it quite well, but a lot of others are really struggling. Well, here speaking with Jason Hayes, who's the Director of Environmental Policy at the Mackinac Center. He's also a co-author of a report that shows that Governor Whitmer's campaign is looking to close the Line 5 pipeline up into the residents of the Upper Peninsula. Jason, we've got to take a quick break. We're still a capitalist country here, so we got to do some work with our sponsors. So would you be, uh, could you hold for another segment for us? Absolutely, yep. Great, and you're watching and listening to the Conservative Commandos radio show and on the AUM TV network in California and also on our Roku channel. Also on iHeartTV247.com and on America and on America's network as well. Uh, my co-host is George Lander. He's on the other side, but we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. So we're going to do some business with our sponsors. Don't go away. We have so much more to talk about with Jason Hayes on the other side. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 888-431-0562. That's 888-431-0562. 888-431-0562. Dish TV is better than cable TV. Here's why. Dish has the nation's lowest TV price, along with an award-winning DVR that can skip commercials, record eight shows at once, and get access to thousands of movies at your fingertips. 
cable simply can't even compare. So the smart choice is to cut the cable and get DISH. Plus, you get all these great TV features, free HD DVR upgrade, free installation, and free movie channels. Say goodbye to cable and get more with DISH TV. 877-290-7764. 877-290-7764. As an added bonus, you can switch to DISH now and receive a $50 Visa gift card. So call now and get DISH TV. Call 877-290-7764, 877-290-7764. That's 877-290-7764. Limited time offer, 24-month commitment, and credit qualification required. Cancellation fee, monthly equipment fees, and other restrictions apply. Promotion can change at any time. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it, and folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get The Secret War free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge, from the folks at Swiss America and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The secret war is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos, the radio show, the television show. Thanks to AON TV Network, Roku, and of course, the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We are broadcast all over the place, but if you're not near one of those broadcast towers, Al Gore's amazing internet comes to the rescue. We truly are everywhere. Maybe not in North Korea or China, but most everywhere else, we really are there. But uh, I'm George Landreth, and I, of course, am here today with the doctor of our republic, Dr. Nasser Sheikh. We're your co-hosts, and we want you to remember this is the place to be. Thanks for being with us. Of course, you can always check out our website, ccrshow.com, for rebroadcast or more information. We've been talking with Jason Hayes. He is uh, with the Mackinac Center. It's at one of the uh, state-based think tanks, and I would argue it's probably one of the very best state based think tanks in the country. Um, they just do some great work. And um, we've been discussing with Jason some of the stuff that Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer has been up to. Now, you've probably, as I think Jason made reference to, heard of her of late. She's gotten herself into some uh, issues over uh, COVID. And I think uh, some of her courts have ruled that some of the things she did were well beyond her authority to do. But, um, but today, we're talking mostly about energy. And energy is pretty important if you'd like your house to not be the same temperature as it is outside. And with winter coming, um, and I've, I, I've, I've, not, I've only traveled in Michigan once or twice in the wintertime, but my recollection is it can get really cold in Michigan in the wintertime. So I have a feeling that Michigan folks are pretty into heating, for example, more so than perhaps people from Florida. But maybe I'm wrong. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, let's just talk a little about what this means, because to me, this sounds a little bit like it's got, if you will, if it's a flavor pretty similar to the Green New Deal. She wants to reduce uh, carbon emissions, and she's convinced that people freezing to death will do that. Well, yeah, that's you can make people freeze to death and achieve your Green New Deal goals. That is one way <laughs> to accomplish them. Another way is build more nuclear plants, which would make a lot more sense. But yes, this um, this uh, recent order by Governor Whitmer that revokes the Line 5 easement um, is building on uh, previous, in September, she uh, passed an executive directive that uh, orders the state to go to net zero CO2 emissions by the year 2050. So this is one of the ways uh, that she is apparently trying to achieve that goal. So it's very similar, like in kind of at a, at a state level, it's sort of like the Green New Deal. It's this idea that we can kill off the reliable energy that we've uh, used for decades to provide us, uh, you know, to make us really the country that we are, the, the country that, that, you know, does things like design the V8 engine, that sends people to the moon, those, those sorts of things. We're, we're really setting up policies that are trying to take away that, that ability that will make it so that your house is difficult or expensive to heat uh, 
you know, you look at uh, other other areas. The UK, for example, has similar things where you can read about um, pensioners or senior citizens in the UK literally purchasing bus tickets so that they can ride public transit to stay warm in the winter. We're going into those same kind of situations where we close down our natural gas plants, our coal plants, our nuclear plants, and in place of that, what we do is we try to build wind and solar. And so the, the two big utilities, for example, in Michigan, in the southern peninsula, are both planning to go to net zero CO2 emissions by either 2040 or 2050. And so all of those kind of things are like a big policy agenda to move us toward what the Green New Deal would be pushing for. And this, this report that I wrote with my co-author Isaac Orr from Center of the American Experiment uh, describes really this the impacts of what to expect if you close down. So um, there's just one example. Uh, if in, in Governor Whitmer, she put together a task force called the, the Energy Task Force for the UP, and they looked at propane supply. Propane is really the, the heating fuel that a lot of people in Michigan rely on to stay warm, to cook their food, you know, all of those sorts of things. There's a report that was put out by the state government said 630,000 households in the state rely on propane for heating or cooking or something like that. Now, 300,000 of those are like summer cabins and that. So 330,000 remaining use propane every day. And so if you close down line five, then that's where a lot of that propane comes from because the pipeline ships it from Canada down through Superior, Wisconsin, through the Straits of Mackinac to the refineries that are in the Midwest. So in Sarnia, Ontario, uh, in Toledo, Ohio, and in D Detroit, Michigan. So suddenly those refineries all lose the, the energy that they rely on to produce things like jet fuel that powers the Detroit airport, the propane that heats the homes, like I said, 330,000 homes across the state of Michigan. All of those things suddenly become in very short supply if you do something like what Governor Wetmer is trying to do, which is shut down something. So it's extremely short-sighted. It will raise the price of heating and transportation fuels, it will put several thousand jobs in danger, and it'll come at a time when the economy, as we've already been discussing in the previous um, at the previous 10 minute uh, period, we're already reeling from COVID related job losses and you know pressure on our economics. So we're gonna now just stack on even more problems economically and, and really at the end of the day, you're not gonna get much of an environmental benefit out of it because the really silly part about all of this is the company that operates the pipeline, Enbridge, has said that they will pay to build a tunnel that would put the pipeline underneath the, the bed of the Great Lakes. So the reason why Governor Whitmer is worried about the pipeline existing is because she says there's a potential for an oil spill. The pipeline's been there for 60 plus years. It's still in good shape. It's passed all the tests that it needs to pass. So the risk is quite low. But okay, let's let's admit there's there still is a risk, and we're we're concerned about that. Okay, well the state government funded a report that was an alternatives report. So what do we do with it if we're worried about a an oil spill in the waters of the Great Lakes? Because everybody admits that an oil spill in the Great Lakes would be horrific. Nobody wants it. So. The state government and the company came up with an idea and said, well, we could drill a, a tunnel in the bedrock, 100 feet below the, the bed of the Great Lakes. We could move the, the pipeline down there into a cement line sealed tunnel. That would solve all of the problems. The environmental issues where people are concerned about a spill in the Great Lakes are now gone because, again, it's an encased pipeline 100 feet below the, the waters of the Great Lakes. People are concerned, well, that could cost a lot of money. Enbridge has said they will foot the $500 million bill for the tunnel, and then they will give it back to the state. It's a win-win. There's environmentally, economically, there's no reason for us to, to get in the way of the company doing this. It just doesn't make any sense. But yet still, that's the policy that's being engaged right now is close down the pipeline and make it economically unlikely that the company is going to even want to continue business in this state. So that does sound pretty crazy stuff when you think about it. Uh, people freezing to death, people being unemployed. That doesn't strike me as good policy. And, uh, right. You know, and it's all to cut back on uh, CO2 a little bit. A little bit. CO2. Correct. 
which is a gas that, that is not poisonous. We're breathing it out right now. Plants breathe it in, essentially, they don't really breathe, but through photosynthesis, they take it in. It's part right. of nature. So it's not like it's carbon monoxide, which is poisonous. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and that's what we're going to disrupt everything for. It's crazy stuff. But, well, right. um, our time's about up. But can you tell folks how they can follow the work that you and your colleagues do at the Mackinac Center? Also, just your own Twitter, things like that, where you're uh, involved in discussing public policy and, and what's happening in the world. Sure. Uh, anybody can, can read any of Mackinac Center stuff at just go to Mackinac.org. And uh, it's a Michigan thing. Mackinac is spelled with a silent C at the end. So it's M-A-C-K-I-N-A-C dot org all of our stuff's up on the web there and freely available there you can find me on twitter at jason t hayes uh easy to find and uh very happy to interact with your your listeners and viewers and and uh send me good ideas i'm happy to listen to them thanks so much jason we really appreciate it jason hayes with the mackinac center we are up against the clock so we've got to take a quick break but uh don't go away because the good doctor and i will be right back after these messages Mom, thank God you're going to be okay. I'm so relieved. But you both should know when my time comes, I have a final expense policy with Senior Care USA. Is Senior Care USA the life insurance policy that helps loved ones pay for funeral expenses and other debts? Bill and I called to get more information. Yes, and there's an immediate payout of up to $50,000. If you're over 50, call Senior Care USA now to learn more about final expense insurance plans. There's no medical exam, even if you have a pre-existing condition like I do. But when I called, the quote was free, and there was no pressure. I found out that policies start for as little as 35 cents a day. Rates will never increase and coverage won't decrease. I'm gonna call today. Ask about the free prescription discount card. Oh, I'm so glad you'll be taken care of. Call 1-800-822-7419. That's 1-800-822-7419. But is it? It's really just the beginning, right? Have you written a book and want it published but don't know where to start? You're not alone. Page Publishing cuts through the confusion that most new authors face, like copyright protection, barcodes, printing, and digital uploading. We will get your book into bookstores now. We guide you through the publishing maze and help you distribute and sell your work in hard copy and ebook formats. That's right. We will digitize and place your book for sale on Amazon, Apple iBooks, and Google offering it to millions don't waste another minute most publishers won't even look at new author submissions but we're different we review your book and provide you feedback in about a week if we decide to publish your book your work ends and ours begins from copy editing and proofing to typesetting and book cover art our team gets you into bookstores fast call 1-877-461-5033 Does your current bathroom need to be updated immediately? Introducing One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling. The complete and hassle-free way to get the new bathroom of your dreams in as little as one day. And for as little as $1.99 a month. Yes, the experts at One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling will come to you anywhere in the country and show you all the customized options. Now you can have a brand new bathroom in as little as one day. Large or small bathrooms, if you want a new bathtub or shower installed, we can do it in as little as one day. And if you call right now, you can save $750 off your remodel. We make it easy by offering you financing as low as $199 per month. So for as little as $199 a month, you can finally have the bathroom of your dreams. Call now to schedule your free in-home consultation. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos radio show and television show. Thanks to AM and TV Network and the Conservative Commandos Radio Network and Al Gore's amazing internet. We truly are everywhere. We're glad that you have spent this time with us. I do uh, just want to ask uh, the good doctor, how can folks follow you? 
when you're not actually on the conservative commandos hosting because you do lots of good stuff how can they follow you and uh and keep up with all the things that you're thinking about and and uh and and working on well thanks george well, you can go to my website first of all it's d-r-n-a-s-i-r-s-h-a-i-k-h.com dr nasser shake.com you can go to my uh, Twitter account, which is at Master Shake Show. That's at Master Shake Show. We finally were allowed to come back onto YouTube after being in show for a long time. So, you know, the Dr. Master Shake Show on YouTube and on Facebook, it's the Dr. Master Shake Show. So just put my name inside there. I'm sure you'll get there. And we want to thank our guest one more time. We have Matt Margolis. He was talking to us about the Pennsylvania lawmakers and how they're seeking to decertify the state election results citing substantial irregularities. We also had a new guest, her name was Rachel Jolie, and she's basically a conservative mom, and she, along with two of her friends, put together a company called Primarily, spelled P-R-I-M-E-R-R-I-L-L-Y, and basically it's a way for parents and, and moms to sort of, you know, parent, even dads too, obviously, to parent their children to become patriots. And then finally, I want to talk about Jason Hayes, who's the Director of Environmental Policy at the Mackinac Center in Michigan, talking about all of the, let's say, unconstitutional laws that are being broken by the Governor Whitmer in terms of passing all these COVID mandates and then looking to basically put Michiganders out of propane use by basically banning the uh, Pipeline 5 that's going to be up, well, it's supposed to be under construction in the uh, Upper Peninsula area. So. We had three great guests once again, George, here on the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Indeed we do. And I'm George Landreth. You can get uh, keep up with me at ff.org. That's the website for Frontiers of Freedom, the organization I head, ff.org. Twitter, it's at G Landreth, L-A-N-D-R-I-T-H. And on Parlor, it's Real George Landreth. And... Uh, that's that's where we are but our time is up and uh, both uh, dr shake and i want to say thank you for joining us we look forward to seeing you tomorrow on tv and on radio but until then we just say god bless